Cheers! Cheers! Do it again. Oh, this one. <laughs> Welcome to Stout Conversations. In this episode, we talk with Paul, the ale apothecary in Bend, Oregon, where the mantra is art over industry. So here we are in our tasting room. Um, we are located on the back side of uh, this little building that used to be part of the um, Brywood Mill Complex, and they actually used to make balsa wood airplanes in here. One cool thing about the building is you got some cool beams, and it's all, you know, part of the old history of this town, you know, the timber town, and um, it kind of fits with um, fits with us and what we're all about, um, you know, so we've got a picture of... Um, us up out on the brewery property you can see the brewery just barely right here um, but that encapsulates kind of the uh, the place that the brewery is and um, tasting room is where we're able to share share our story main thing is we're trying to make uh, we're trying to make completely natural beer with um, Oregon ingredients uh, direct farm sourced uh, in a way that's unique to our place, right? So um, just like uh, breweries of history, you know, prior to style um, and prior to people really knowing that you could make beers like other people, um, brewers were using ingredients that were, were, were local to their brewery and um, building their brew houses. Um, so each brew house was very unique and so they were creating something that uh, the best they could out of the materials that they had available, both with the um, the raw materials that were sourced nearby, and then the actual brewery itself and how the beer was made. And those two things are really kind of what we're focusing on and trying to make something totally unique, right? We're 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 working with local farmers, and then we're also we've got this uh, very unique brewing process, and you know the combination of local ingredients, and then uh, our process with the with our water and the yeast from the air, creates creates our beer. Um, and so, yes. Yeah, so you brought that into your tap room. Yeah, definitely. And so, um, you know, we're it, it's uh, our tasting room is uh, it's very limited um, in the way like uh, we're only open a little bit. We're not we don't serve food, uh, and our pour sizes are pretty small. But it's really just focused on our beer, right? It's uh, we're trying to keep that in mind. So. Um, kind of in line with all that, we have we have a fair amount of cool artwork around, you know, because uh, our motto here is art over industry. Um, and this big piece on the wall, it was done by my friend Chris Cole, who's a local artist who does a lot of kinetic work, but obviously um, he's a very good painter as well. Um, uh, another local uh, artisan, uh, Hunter Dahlberg at Orion Forge, does uh, blacksmith work, and so we got his stuff here, and um, a lot of a lot of times I will compare his uh, way of doing things to kind of like the, the way that I wanted my brewery to look. Um, so kind of like uh, uh, an artisan bread, right? You can, um, <laughs> they, each loaf is gonna look a little bit different, right? And they're gonna run out at a certain time and, and there you, there's evidence visually of the artisan in each loaf of bread. Um, a blacksmith will take something uh, we'll take metal and through a force of his his strength, his energy will transform the metal, right? And it's a little harder to show that when, you know, we are packaging our product into bottles, but it is helpful to to have these kind of um, inspirations to, to share with people. It's like, because right. you know, through our actions, just like I was saying with our brew house, um, our beers are going to have that energy in them and, and be uniquely different. Well, I was looking for a mannequin to display basically um, the sweat, the sweatshirt that she's wearing, um, the goggles and the hat. So, like, the name of my brewery is the Ale Apothecary, right? And so, apothecary um, is an antiquated term that has come to mean, or back in the old days, meant you know, a compounding chemist. Um, but the actual root word means shopkeeper, and so ha, I'm descended from three generations of independent drugstore operator, um, and so I wanted to take that idea of a small shop with a guy behind the counter as a way to explain my that my brewery, right? It's it's not going to be an industrial brewery; it's going to be a very small project, and I'm basically the guy behind the counter, um, and so uh, trying to use that family lineage. 
Um, the shirt that the mannequin is wearing, or the sweatshirt, is uh, my great-grandfather's college graduation jersey from WSU in 1905. Oh, wow. Right, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really cool because I've got this picture of these uh, Tour de France guys back in the old days, and they're, they're, this is like a, an athletic type of a jersey. It's got the Spalding tag in it and all that, um, and the skull and crossbones. It's, it's, it's pretty comical. Uh, but, it's, you know, she's also wearing his riding goggles and then my grandfather's hunting cap. Um, so, you know, we found, we found her online, and I really like the fact that, I mean, she, I think she's from the 50s, and she's got this um, crack in her face that kind of looks like a scar. Um, and so kind of like, I really like the idea that she's not perfect. She's beautiful in her own way, just kind of like our beers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't say any of one of them are perfect, but they are all very beautiful in their own way. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the story of the mannequin. Our tasting room um, are a bunch of images that I like to call our flow chart wall, you know, um, in pictures. Uh, yep, so uh, this is our barrel cellar. We've got about 160, 170 barrels here that we, uh, we, we're aging all of our beer in. So all of our beer goes into barrels um, for barrel aging. Um, and they spend anywhere from six months to three years in the barrels. Um, Quite a different process than your typical brewery that does some barrel aging for just a specific beer. You you barrel yeah. age everything. Barrel age everything. So yeah, the one it's of the part of your process. Part of the process, exactly. Yeah, because we are uh, utilizing uh, wild uh, mixed culture of yeast and microorganisms. Uh, wood works best for that because of the the porosity. So these microorganisms can live in the wood and therefore surround the beer during its aging process and help mature it. And so after uh, barrel aging, uh, we have our small packaging area down here um, where you'll see really the only stainless steel tanks in our brewery. Um, but th these are strictly for uh, getting the beer into you and uh, mixing it up with the yeast and the honey prior to bottling. Um, and then uh, we have a few barrels here that we, we, we dry hop or we put the beer onto, say, um, um, tree needles prior to packaging, you know, any, any kind of aromatic uh, infusion will happen in, in these barrels. Um, and then on packaging days, we've got our little filler over here, uh, capper for the 500 mil bottles, and then our corker cager. But, you know, most of this stuff is, is movable, you know, because right. of the limited space. Um, and then uh, equally as important is uh, after the beer gets bottled, um, is the bottle conditioning area uh, because just like the barrels um, we're gonna have we have to hold on to uh, the beer in the bottles for three to six months or longer until they're ready for for sale to go to market and so this is our, our bottle conditioning zone each bin is going to be a different batch of beer uh, various, various dates and so again it's kind of an, an organizational thing we'll have some beers that that are getting ready to to sell where other ones have just gone into bins and so it's just just more inventory to manage <laughs> Man, so you have layers of bottles of beer in each one of these bins yeah right? yeah exactly a couple yeah layers yeah of usually for the for the uh Depending 750s the yeah there's we uh there's two layers oh, wow. um the 375s we can get three um but yeah there it's it's uh I never considered when I started this brew. I never really considered the amount of inventory I was going to have to hold on to. But at the same time, I was designing the brewery to have beer available kind of like you would um, a woodshed, right? It's like right. that it, it, it didn't have to be sold immediately upon being, you know, quote unquote ready, like age would be beneficial and we could use it and pull from it when we need or sit on it and hold it for a future date, you know? Um, and so that's, that's kind of how we manage it. And then yes, when we roll into the other room, which is our tasting room, um, yeah, that's, yeah. that's basically the, the footprint there. Well, it's a beautiful space. I mean, you've done a fantastic job of making this one, a functional part of your operation, as well as being the face of the brewery to the public. Today. Well, thank you. And making it warm and welcoming. And it just has like a cool special feel to it. Thank you very much, you know. Caught me at my best, working hard on videos for you guys. So hit subscribe, you don't wanna miss out on what we got coming for you. Cheers. <laughs>